Hey there, welcome to Product Marketing Maestros, Tales from the Frontlines. I'm your host, Nathan Karthik. As a top product marketing voice, I've always found that real world case studies are the true litmus test for the effectiveness of any product marketing strategy. And that is why in this show, we dive into the minds of industry titans, as well as rising stars, unpacking their expertise in action-packed episodes, showcasing the power of product marketing through real-world case studies. And today, my friends, we are joined by product marketing maestro Aphrodite Brinsmead in New York. Aphrodite is a seasoned B2B product marketing leader and content creator with extensive experience in both early-stage startups and large enterprises. Most recently, as director of product marketing at Duro, she founded the product marketing function driving 100% year-over-year organic traffic growth and launching successful product features. Aphrodite has a strong background as an industry analyst, having spent a decade at Omdia, which is formerly Ovum, advising top tech companies on go-to-market strategies. She is known for her expertise in market research, B2B marketing, and storytelling, always prioritizing the customer in her marketing campaigns. Based in New York, she is passionate about SaaS, go-to-market strategy, and startups. And with that, let's welcome Aphrodite. Aphrodite, welcome to the show. Hi, Nathan. I'm really excited to be here and chat about some of the product marketing challenges I've seen in the industry. Absolutely fabulous. Wonderful. So Aphrodite, as we promised the audience, we'll take a situation from your experience and we'll use the ABC framework. We'll talk about the antecedents, what were the prior challenges, We'll talk about the behaviors, what were some of the actions that you took, and we'll talk about the conclusion, how things played out. So with that, Aphrodite, pick a situation from your experience and tell us what were the antecedents? What were the prior challenges? So I want to talk about the relationship between sales and marketing. I think it's a super important relationship in any organization, particularly when there's a long, complex sales cycle. And this is actually something I've written about already for the Product Marketing Alliance. And... What I want to talk about is when I think every product marketer has had salespeople reach out to them and say, I can't find this content, make me more on pages, like jump into this pitch tomorrow and help me just update it for this client. And you, as a product marketer, you can be a little overwhelmed with these requests or perhaps you've already organized all of the content and shared it a hundred times with the salespeople. So yeah, to talk about the sales process, how to improve it with content, how to figure out getting salespeople the right materials at the right stage so that they can improve the conversation and ultimately close deals and make more revenue for the company. That's right. More revenue for the company. That's the ultimate goal, right? One team, one dream. So I love it. So this is, I think, a challenge that many of our folks in the audience would be faced with as well. So, okay, thank you, Aphrodite, for laying out the challenges. Now let's talk about the behavior. So tell us what are some of the actions that we can expect to see in situations like this? Yeah, so at a previous company I worked at, we had a really long, complex sales cycle. It was an ad tech company. And in an ideal world, the sales cycle would take six months, but it could often take as much as two years. So pretty long, many different stakeholders and need to connect, convince lots of different decision makers, senior leadership, like bring in CIOs in the last minute and help them change their behavior and purchase a new product. Many of the time, some of these big companies were trying to build the solution themselves in-house or alternatively, common scenario, they were using one of our competitors and it was our job to convince them that we were the best tool for the job, of course. So one of the projects I worked on pretty early on when I joined there was I collaborated with the VP of sales. And we mapped out every stage of the sales process to figure out from the very first meeting to a deal closed one, what would be the ideal presentations that a salesperson would come to market with, how we would talk to the prospect and how we would convince them to move to the next stage of the sales cycle and continue with the evaluations. So as part of that, we, we had a standard first meeting deck that everyone in the company, all the account directors were using. But after that, there wasn't much standardization. So we wanted to create something that everyone could follow and find collateral for those different stages. Um, so as part of that, we created a couple of different decks. One included like a business case deck that shared, had some customizable slides in it for the sales account director to add in some of the challenges they'd heard in the earlier calls and the discovery call. 
And then for us to present the ROI and the business case for them to invest in the solution. And we were very focused on revenue, how to help drive that. One of the other things that the company did really well and we wanted to highlight in the sales cycle is they had a very strong customer success team. And so we actually brought customer success and created a customer success presentation as part of the sales cycle. So they would get the opportunity to meet some of our customer success leaders, realize that they would be supported post sale and give them a bit more confidence that we would actually be able to achieve some of those ROI benefits. And wow. We created a deck for that as well. Wow. Really, really good, right? I love it because this is a story of a symphony, right? We're bringing different parts of the organization to sing off the same hymn sheet. And so it's really a, a beautiful symphony. I love it, love it. So given these behaviors, now bring it home, Aphrodite. Tell us about the conclusion. How did these situations play out for you? Uh, yeah, it actually worked really well. Of course, it wouldn't have worked unless we'd spend time with the sales team, training them on the materials, explaining more about the process and giving them the ability to easily find and customize these tools. And product marketing still had a big role to play in helping with some of these big pitches and customizing the ROI. But yeah, once we rolled out these materials, we had a much more streamlined, smooth sales process. It was clear which decks and which stage would happen next. And there were some standard slides and things that we used for customization. And it was much clearer rather than creating a whole deck from scratch, there would be one or two slides that we would update based on the goals and ROI. And it actually, yeah, it was a very successful um, project that I worked on with, with sales. And then a couple of the other things that we did in, in conjunction with this is I actually worked on a Forrester Total Economic Impact Report. Um, if you've heard of that, it's uh, Forrester is an independent industry analyst. And these reports really, they dig into the details, they interview your customers and they come up with a framework of the real ROI that your solution will be able to deliver for customers. And this report really like slotted into that business case scenario, the sales decks that we were creating to kind of validate from a third party external company that we were able to deliver the ROI along with case studies as well and examples. And then the, the holy grail, I think, for all product marketers and sales teams is having an organized place to store all of your content. And we invested in a high spot. And one of my colleagues actually helped set this up, map all of the content within high spot to the different stages of the sales cycle, give everybody a centralized source of truth, as it were. Um, I think that these tools aren't perfect. They require a lot of maintenance, training, like encouraging of using processes, but it really helped us to better track how we were using the different collateral and which things were most successful and not. And yeah, fi final, final points to add on, on the sales marketing relationship is that I'm really passionate about like building this like trusted relationship and it starts whenever, you know, at any time. It's important to get that buy-in and become a true collaborative partner. I think oftentimes product marketers end up being, you know, content collateral producers, very like tactical rather than strategic. But project like this really helps us to be seen in a more strategic way with the sales team. And yeah, getting direct feedback, listening to the calls, like doing the follow-up. Like once you create a deck, it's never finished. It's always an evolution. And that your work never stops. So you want to make sure that you're getting regular input from the sales team, hit, listening to prospects and their feedback and making sure that it's really resonating. Beautiful, beautiful. Wow. Look at this. You brought this whole story home. And I love it because it's not just about product marketing, right? Product marketing, of course, is a very important piece, but not the only piece in the puzzle. So you brought all these other teams in and you talk about how product marketing is not just tactical, we're not just order takers, right? We can also be very, very strategic. So love those lessons in there. Excellent. So thank you, Aphrodite. Folks, uh, definitely reach out to Aphrodite. Now tell us, Aphrodite, if people wanted to reach out to you, where can they learn more and find out what's next for you? Well, you can always find me on LinkedIn. I probably spend way too much time on there, but I'm also in the process of setting up my own product marketing B2B tech blog, which you can see the early stages of it at aphroditebrinsme.com. It's still in its infancy, so patience, please. And I'm exploring new product marketing opportunities at the moment. So watch this space and hopefully you'll find out soon my next product marketing adventure. Absolutely fabulous. We just cannot wait for that Aphrodite. So all the best on that. And folks, definitely reach out to Aphrodite for more great advice like this and armed with that knowledge onward and upward.